a 90-day restriction on people travelling into the United States of America whilst they work out their vetting policy. But there are some fundamental differences between the, tr- the, 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 the order that he signed a few weeks ago that, remember, led to protests not very far from this studio, uh, led to, in, in many other British cities, uh, led to international outrage and led to the American judiciary striking it down. So he's come back, but there are some fundamental differences. And just take these on board, please. This new order does not suspend immigrants coming in from Iraq at all. There is no indefinite ban on Syrian refugees. Current visa holders will not be affected in any way at all. And refugees that have already been given asylum and granted that will be allowed, and this will not be phased in until the middle end of next week. But what he is doing is he's saying that citizens of Iran, Libya, Syria, Somalia, Sudan and Yemen will once more be subjected to a 90-day restriction on travelling to the United States of America. So Trump put it forward, he had it rejected, but he's brought it back with amendments. And my question to you is, is Donald Trump right to stick to his guns? And my view is that he absolutely is, and he is, and he showed he's capable of listening. You know, he could have gone through the courts and dragged this out for weeks or months, but no, he's listened, he's come back with something that he thinks is sensible. He hasn't even fronted it himself. He's let, he's let Rex Tillerson, his Secretary of State, take the lead. Is he right to stick to his guns? I really think that he is, and I, I'm going to ask you, what's not to like about this? Surely... Isn't it the duty of a government to put things in place that are legal and protect your own citizens? And I, I'm very interested to hear. I mean, maybe you're so outraged by this one that you'll be, that, that you'll be protesting in Whitehall tomorrow. I don't know. I wonder. Amy and Hove, what do you think, Amy, about Trump coming back and signing another executive order? Well, Nigel, it couldn't come a moment too soon. I I absolutely am infuriated with all of these do-good liberal snowflake lefty nutcases who seem to be in complete denial that there's any type of problem in the world with terrorism. I mean, it just it's beyond me. And the fact that Donald Trump, President Trump, has been forced to uh, reissue this thing, which, again, you know, there's going to be people screaming and crying and all the rest of it. It, It just infuriates me. Well, I wonder, Amy, I wonder, Amy, this time round, what is it they can scream and cry about? Do you know, Nigel, at this point, they can think of anything. They they don't need a a valid excuse. These people don't have common sense. And unfortunately, they have the loudest voices and tend to be not very uh, civil when they say what they don't like. And one thing I'd like to know, Nigel, think that I get a chance to speak to, is when is the European, when are the European leaders going to show some sense of responsibility to, to its citizens and stop this wow. massive flood of people coming across <clears throat> the Mediterranean? Well, Amy, I was involved in this right at the very start, when President Juncker um, of the European Commission put in place the EU's common asylum policy, and I spoke on that very day. I said the problem was they broadened the definition of who a refugee is to virtually anybody. In fact, Mr Juncker said, if you come from a poor country, you possibly would qualify for refugee status. So I've been fighting them on this, Amy, absolutely from the word go. I was mortified when uh, Chancellor Merkel said... You know, as many of you as you can come, we can cope with. Um, I think they've made some terrible mistakes. Right now, uh, they do have a deal with Turkey. They're giving Turkey money. Uh, the flow of people has slowed, uh, but it's still two or three thousand people a week uh, well, that, are, that are coming into Greece or Italy. So, so the answer is, they still in Europe have not genuinely confronted this. But when do when is it going to? to happen because i mean i just saw 1500 people came in over the weekend and i mean that the poor people in italy and greece are absolutely overrun there's there's riots going on in paris look at sweden i mean 
I just don't understand, Nigel, when the European leaders are going to start Amy. showing some sense of responsibility to their citizens who are victims. They're Amy, I agree with you. I agree. With you. And I will be at the European summit on Thursday and Friday this week as a group leader in the European Parliament. Um, and I'll be asking that question. You know, when are we going to get some sense of reality? When are you as leaders going to reconnect actually with your populations? Amy, I thank you for your call. Well, Amy, uh, clearly thinks that Trump is right to do this and perhaps thinks that Europe and we should be doing this. Whichever way, whichever side of the argument you're on, please get involved with this debate. Trump has re-signed a new presidential order with amendments. Is he right to stick to his guns? To get involved, call me on 0345 6060 973. Text me at 84850. You can tweet me on at LBC, not forgetting the hashtag Farage and LBC. And you can watch us live on LBC's Facebook page right now. And I'm going to ask Amid in Harrow. Amid, is Trump right to do what he's done? Um, I think so, totally not. It's not fair. I, I personally don't think, because I'm from East Africa myself, from Somalia. Yep. And I've been in this country for 27 years. I'm a dual citizen, I'm a British citizen, I'm yeah. a, and I'm a, a Somali citizen. And, for example, people like me are affected by this travel ban. And, and uh, what is Donald Trump hasn't chosen those countries that he has personal interest in, like Saudi Arabia and, and um, UAE, where all the terrorists, main terrorists come from. You so, know, so Ahmed, are, are you saying, are you saying, Ahmed, that Trump really has been too liberal with this? And he should have had a lot more countries on the list. Is that what you're saying? Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Because, because it's not fair that he targets weak countries. They have weak economic powers. They have no influential influence on the UN, UN, UN United Nations. They have no... You know what I'm saying? He chose the weakest countries, the weakest Muslim countries, with, with low income. Um, but he hasn't chosen those countries that he has personal interest in, like, for example... Investments. He's got personal investments in those other countries that he didn't put in the list, and I don't find that usually fair. To be I'm honest. sure, Ahmed. You, you know your point about including Saudi Arabia. I think that would get massive support from LBC callers, listeners, texters, tweeters, Facebookers, and I'm sure it would in the United States of America too. But tell me, I mean, Ahmed, when you came to this country 27 years ago, I mean, Islamic terrorism didn't really exist, did it? Yeah, you didn't really exist. And and Nigel Farage, to be honest, I've never spoken to you personally, but I'm a big fan of yours because I've watched a couple of videos of yours on YouTube where you talked about Somaliland and 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 when you went to the, um, um, Europe and you were you were advocating for Somaliland to be. Yes, I have been. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I've seen the videos. I'm a big fan of yours, and I was a big fan of you, Kip. But I think he's kind of biased, you know only included certain countries. Right, so Ahmed, Ahmed, I thank you very much for your comments. You're, yes, I am a supporter of the recognition of Somaliland, very much so, I always have been. I thank you for your call. Ahmed making the point that actually he's picked on weak countries, not on big, strong countries, who probably pose an even greater threat. So Ahmed's saying Trump should have gone further. I wonder what Jack in Nantwich makes of this. How, is Trump right to stick to his guns and re-sign this order? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Right, go on. Um, um, and uh, I'm just going to sort of say that I sort of have an interest in this because half of my family have come from Iran. They they came here uh, many years ago and came yep. and settled here. And um, how the border system worked before this, I don't know how it's changed now. I sort of know how the, how the travel ban works, uh, but... How the system worked was they used to have a computerized system where, with the border, they would uh, flag you up if you if you were born in a certain place, you came from a certain place. So, how how do you expect with a system like that, which is so sort of automatic, that will bring you in for questioning? That's what happened to us when we visited. Yeah, we we were uh, my dad was taken for questioning for about forty five minutes, just asked sort of general questions, sort of quite probing questions. How do you expect? the vetting system to be improved if it's so random and arbitrary how do you like well jack yeah. jack 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 but i mean just just bear in mind that actually all that trump was doing with order number 1 and order number 2 is very much following up on what president obama had done it was obama that had identified those seven countries had already had already arguably put in place 
some quite tough vetting. And all that Trump is asking for today, he's asking for three months where he examines whether what Obama has put in place is safe enough and he's conceded that he doesn't think Iraq poses a direct terrorist threat. I mean, he's Jack, surely he's not being wholly unreasonable here, is he? I, I would say a complete restriction is very unreasonable. We, we, we came and we, we, we went through the system. It was quite an arbitrary system. And they decided after 45 minutes, who were the last people in the airport, yeah. they decided that we pose no threat. When was this, Jack? And, uh, this was this was a couple of years ago. This was about 20, 2010. OK, OK, OK. Well, Jack, I'm, listen, I'm not arguing that any of these systems are perfect, but what I am arguing, I think, is that is that there is a threat out there from extreme Islamic radicalism, and it is sensible for countries, surely, to make at least some provision to protect themselves. I mean, absolutely. I'm not just saying we should... No, sure. You know, but, you know... It was quite an arbitrary system, quite a um, unre- quite quite a, a system that just yeah. fried you up depending on where you were born. Yeah. And I mean, really, is that you know you can't just make um, I'm, I'm improvising a bit here. You can't just make assumptions based on people, based on you know where they're from. You know, Jack. I Jack. I I, I get your call. You've been through this. You don't particularly like it. I understand that. But you do have to have to understand, Jack, and thank you for your call. You do have to understand a lot of people are very, very concerned about this. I mean, Frank on Facebook says we should have the same sort of ban. We need to keep our own people safe. On text, Tina Lomax from St Albans says, Hi, Nigel. What on earth was wrong with the first travel restriction? Nothing. Um, Evening, Nigel. The liberal elite need to wake up and smell the coffee. Trump is doing everything he has pledged to do. What is the problem with genuine democracy? They only like it if the wind blows their way. And that's from Tom. And I got a tweet here. Yes, Nigel, Trump is right. We should all follow his examples. So all of you that are texting, tweeting and Facebooking are agreeing that Trump was right to sign this today, are suggesting perhaps even the first travel restriction had an out wrong with it, and are saying the British government should do the same. There must be some of you out there that fundamentally disagree with this. Please get involved with this debate. So Trump won't be beaten by the naysayers, by the courts, by the street protesters. No, he signed another executive order uh, restricting, not banning, restricting people coming into the USA for 90 days, but with some significant changes. Iraq is no longer on the list. There is no permanent ban now on refugees coming from Syria. And anybody with an existing visa can happily travel to the USA. And the whole thing comes in on the 16th of March. There was no overnight chaos at the airports. And I'm asking you, what's not to like about this? I mean, all he's doing, he's revising Obama's policy. He's keeping his pledge to the American people that he would do his utmost to make America safer. And I wonder, will people be in uproar and out protesting? Because if they are, I hope those same people... And I remember last time round, Jeremy Corbyn condemning Trump, Tim Farron condemning Trump, Caroline Lucas condemning Trump. Yet they didn't say a dicky bird, did they? About the 16 countries that ban Jewish Israelis from even going on holiday here. So perhaps Mr Corbyn will now praise Trump for listening and amending his order. I don't know. Um, a text I get in here from Scott who says, of course, the same old faces will be out protesting tomorrow. If they went to work instead, their lives may improve. Just a thought, Scott, you bad person. If it isn't a ban, Isn't that a betrayal of his campaign promise for a total and complete shutdown on Muslims entering the United States? There's no name on that. You're right. He did say, I, Donald J. Trump, am calling for a total and complete shutdown on Muslims entering America. He said it after one of the outrages in Europe. He did, within a couple of weeks, correct that and say he'd gone too far in the heat of the moment. Um, And from that moment on, he's been talking about making America safer and not focusing this whole debate on religion, which I think would be quite a big mistake. Another text here. Hi, Nigel. Trump is right on this, but what happens after the 90 days? The wrong people could come in on the 91st day and thereafter, John from Cambridge. John, of course, 
you know, you're right. There is no absolutely foolproof way of stopping bad people or stopping people who, once they've come, who may then, of course, be radicalised from coming to your country. But I tell you what, John, I'd feel a bit safer living in Trump's America than I would living in Merkel's Germany. And on Facebook, Paul says, I get vetted every time I go to the USA. I'm British and all my family live in the US. I don't have a problem with being vetted. Well, Paul, I go to the States quite a bit and I have to say... They are pretty strict, aren't they, in getting you through immigration. And I happen to think we perhaps ought to be a bit more like that. I wonder what Alan in Fleet in Hampshire thinks of Trump signing this order and sticking to his guns. Hello, Nigel. Hello there. I don't have a general problem with any country vetting people coming in. I think the only issue is it should be a level playing field. I think the problem Trump is conflating Islamic terrorism with all people who potentially are from an Islamic background. You've got two different strands of Islamic terrorism. You've got the Shia-based Islamic terrorism, which is predominantly Hezbollah, Hamas, anti-Israel. You've got the Wahhabi, ISIS-based Islamic terrorism, which is predominantly against the West. Now, if Trump is really intending to make America safer, surely he should be including people who are funded and supported by the Wahhabi-based yeah. Saudis, Egyptians, yeah. Qataris, etc. He's making no mention of those. They are not included in this. So you would be forgiven for thinking, why is that? And the obvious answer to that point would be financial interest. He and other people have a financial interest in most countries. They have a financial bearing on America. He has not included them for that reason if he is truly wanting to make America, America safe, surely he should include those countries as well. Vet everybody from yep. those countries. Yep. Those that then can come in, can come in. Everyone is happy. So, Alan, he's not really going far enough, is he? And, and, and is, it, is it an act of cowardice not to include Saudi Arabia or perhaps an act of greed? Which, in your opinion? I think there are probably influences on America from that sort of money which would impact on American jobs. And if he's trying to present and do something to make America great again and find more financial influence and clout to get American jobs back, he needs Saudi on his side. And he's not going to do anything to impact on that. Now, it's not the Saudi government. It's certain individuals within the Saudi population. So you're saying, Alan, that he's... You're saying he's bent his principles because he thinks it's in America's financial interest to, to stay close to Saudi Arabia. It's... In his, possibly in America's interest, yep. definitely in his interest, but if anyone is injured in America from a Wahhabi-based attack, yep. surely he then is open to accusations that he hasn't made nope. America nope. safe. Alan, you make the point very well, and for those that don't know, Alan clearly does, Wahhabism is something that has been pushed by big Saudi Arabian money, and it's that that's led. I mean, Alan, I'm right on this, aren't I? It's that that's led to the burqa uh, becoming as commonplace as it is. It's the Wahhabi side is a lot more strict. The Iranian side is basically Shia based. Yes. And finally, you've got the hardliners in charge who are a very bad influence in Iran. Yep. The bulk of the Iranian people are not as extreme as the Wahhabis. Yep. The Wahhabi side from the Sunni side is far worse, yep. yet they are not being attacked yep. by this as much as the, the Shia side. And I just don't see the logic in it. That is the bigger. Alan, that, the bigger you make the point. Threat. You make the point with knowledge and you make it beautifully. And I thank you very much indeed uh, for that call. And your tweet's coming in. Donald Trump is right over immigration. Theresa May should follow. ASAP, says David Roberts. Those countries have poor, stroke, non-existent security vetting on people leaving their country, says Amy. Well... Uh, perhaps they want to get shot of some of them, I don't know. Um, what is the problem with a 90-day ban? Um, Britain needs to do the same, and the EU needs to actively turn the boats back, says Sam on Twitter. And Frank says on Facebook, in two years' time, the USA will be the best country to live in under Trump. Watch and wait. Well, Frank, my sense is, my sense is I'd feel safer in Trump's America than Merkel's Germany. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so lots of support for what Trump is doing. Um, Alex at Enfield, are you, are you one that thinks Trump is right or that it won't serve the right purpose? Uh, I don't think he's right or wrong. I think, yeah, I think um, he, he doesn't understand uh, international politics, uh, Nigel. I mean, right. you say you're going to have a 90-day ban. 
and then what? OK, so you have an... It's an old policy, really, this is. Yes, um, it is. Alex, you're right, because Obama started this process. On that, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so basically, the Donald Trump is calling for a total ban. Mm. The reason why that received the criticism that it did is because of what Trump was actually saying about banning Muslims, inverted commas, and you yourself have said that is not only was it impractical, but it was nonsensical. I did, yes, I did. It's not something that was ever going to work. Now, um, the media has not helped in the sense that it keeps trying to assert that the ban was a Muslim ban, almost to give truth to Trump's original statement. So I don't think the media has helped in that context. I think the reporting has been childish and a bit naive. But Alex, Alex, how does he make America safer? What's he got to well, do? Not by not by doing that. I think uh, what Trump misunderstands, and somebody in his position, I'm surprised about it, is he doesn't really understand tone. Um, and when you're leading, it's all about tone and setting the right tone. You're not going to make America say when you actually stimulate and stir up the elements that want to make America unsafe. And those elements aren't going to turn up during your 90-day ban. They will waffle through Mm. many months, many years after that ban. Look how far in the distance those people who went to train as pilots in America and eventually flew planes into the Twin Towers. Look how much um, patience they had. You know, people who commit these horrible crimes, Nigel, they're they're patient people. And and, and that that patience is, is an evil that's constantly brewing and what you don't want to do if you're a sensible leader is to encourage younger people who might not uh, be of that mindset into the fold of those individuals I, and, and and sadly i think one of trump's weaknesses is he's not setting the right tone that would help him uh, make that promise well, more well, well alex in terms of tone you know, the Donald is the Donald. He does things his way. But I asked you, I asked you this once before. I asked you one more yeah. time. If you were in Trump's position, you'd been elected yeah. and you'd been elected saying that you would make America safer. What would you do? Oh, uh, I wouldn't stand on a, on a ticket that made such a, a naive promise because, uh, you know, what he's done is uh, what, what Obama showed him is you have to have continuity. I don't think Obama liked what Bush did. But he didn't completely denounce the Mm. regime when he came in. You need continuity. That's why America has survived as long as it has as a democracy. So he's starting to learn that. Yeah, well, I think, Alex, Alex, I think, Alex, what he was trying to do was offer people hope because people are scared and they've seen what's happening in France and they've seen what's happening in Germany and they've seen what's happening in Brussels and Belgium. And, Alex, what they're saying is we don't want it here. That's why they voted for him. I take your point. This is difficult. This is complex. There is no perfect solution. But he is trying to keep his promise with the American people. And that's the bit that I like. With a flourish of the pen, Trump signs another presidential order putting in place temporary travel restrictions on people coming from countries that 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 his government think could pose a threat to the United States of America. And by the way... The Attorney General, Jeff Jeff Sessions, was part of that press conference today and he made the point that more than 300 people who'd entered the US as refugees are under investigation right now for potential terrorism-related offences. And I remember uh, the last time this all happened, people were screaming blue murder, there's no evidence. Yeah, actually, there is plenty of evidence that America, just as we and Germany and others, ought to be concerned about this issue. And interestingly... Uh, when, he fi- when he signed the first order that was shouted down, protested about, and in the end stopped in the courts, um, I did sense that evening when we had a phone in on it, there was a lot of anger, a lot of heat. I'm not getting that this time round. Is it because Trump has listened and actually what he's putting in place is perfectly reasonable? If that comment makes you really angry, then please call me on 0345 6060 973. But first... An issue that has really been a big part of my political life over the last few years. I've been talking about my worries of the formation of a European army. And it was Nick Ferrari 
who, of course, chaired a debate between Nick Clegg and myself on this issue in the European election to 2014 that first really kicked this off. Remember this. 40 years ago, it was a common market. Now it's a European Union that wants an air force, an army, a navy, and wants to militarily intervene. The but this is a dangerous fantasy. <coughs> the idea that there's going to be a European air force, a European army, it's it proposed. is simply not true. Oh. Oh, Cleggers, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, let me just bring you up to speed, folks. The narrative that is now being put out by my friend Mr Juncker and others is that now we've got Trump, America is going to withdraw completely from Europe, and Europe urgently needs an army, an air force and a navy. But today, it just got, in my view, a little bit worse. Because now, fearing US withdrawal, the European Union is considering its own, yes, wait for it, nuclear deterrent. And I'm not making this up. Uh, Jaroslav Kaczynski, Poland's former Prime Minister, has said that they need to have a European Union nuclear programme. Uh, but perhaps even more importantly... Robert Kieswetter, who's a foreign policy spokesman with Angela Merkel's party, has said that they need, the European Union needs to have nuclear weapons to build on the existing weapons in Great Britain and France. Now, Nick Clegg, if you're in the car or at home and listening, please, please ring in. Not only, not only are we going to have an army, they want nuclear weapons. You couldn't make it up. And they're using the excuse that Trump is going to withdraw from Europe, which he is not going to do. He is committed to NATO and the defence of his friends in Europe. He just wants other European countries to pay the agreed membership fee. Right, back to... Back to... Sorry, I feel really strongly about that. I almost can't believe it. It just gets worse. Back to the question. Is Trump right to stick to his guns to sign a second presidential order, to have watered down some of the conditions that the court struck down. Is he right to stick to his guns and do this? David in Wrexham, what do you think? Hi, Nigel. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, can, I, can I just mention, before we say that, it's, it's what you were just done about now. There was a guy, there was a guy on TV, he was, an, he was an EU spokesman, and when they actually turned around to him and they said, what are the options uh, for Europe... You know, with with Britain leaving leaving the EU, Brexit, he actually turned around and he said, "Well, we can't send uh, an army uh, to to uh, sort of um, uh, keep them in the EU like America did with the Southern states." And I, I did think to myself, yeah. "What a strange thing to say!" You know, mm. if they had an army, I wonder if they. But anyway, moving on to the. Do you subject. know what, David? David, that point you make is a brilliant one, and and one evening very soon. We're going to discuss, I think, and have an hour's debate on, is the world going to be a safer place with an EU army, or is it more likely, is it more likely to provoke conflict? But not now, David. Tell me about okay, Trump. Okay. Tell me about Trump, well, well, but is he right? Right, basically, I, 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 um, the turning point for me about, about this, this uh, restriction was when I heard uh, what a member of the, uh, the FBI, an FBI spokesman, turn around and say, he said, we're not making the proper checks, we're not checking everybody, and there's people coming through and we basically don't, don't know anything about them. And to me, it's not just about the fact that somebody could be planning to let up a bomb or they could be planning to drive a truck. I, I married a Kuwaiti, and to learn Arabic, I went to a mosque in, in Liverpool. Yeah. And what you tend to notice is there's a lot of guys there who are preaching not not just kind of um, uh, you know, things to radicalise people, but they're actually pre preaching sort of hate against uh, countries like Israel, which Israel, t t to me, is an ally because Israel has never threatened the, threatened us. You know, they, they, they're they pretty decent country. And th there's a lot of things going on in the country, and we, we're not vetting people. And you have to ask yourself, do you want somebody like Donald Trump, who, who might not have the perfect dances, yep. but he's doing something, or do you want somebody like Merkel, yep. who just sort of sticks her head in the sand like an ostrich and says, everybody come over here. Yep. Oops, I've made David. a mistake. David, yeah. I get it, mate, and I've said it twice on this show so far, and I'll say it for a third time. I would feel safer living in Trump's America than Chancellor Merkel's Germany. David, I thank you for your call. Your Facebook message is coming in. Robert says, no one has a right to enter into another's country. Whilst immigration, properly controlled, is a wonderful blessing between countries, it is a privilege and not a right. 
and each nation can control and dictate and dictate the terms by which that privilege is extended to others. Trump has every right to continue on this path that is neither racist nor wrong. Jen says on Facebook, the last five presidents before Trump put the exact same ban in place often for twice as long, up to six months, which is what, in fact, Obama did do a few years ago with Iraq. It is not a Muslim ban. It is a ban on people from those countries entering America because they have no checks in place at the country of origin. Second time that point's been made tonight. Leon says on Facebook, do you believe that Islam should be banned in the UK? No, Leon, I don't believe Islam should be banned in the UK. And I believe that if we get ourselves into a position where we go to war against a religion, not only will we lose, but will doom our children to an undoubtedly miserable future. We've got to get the good men and women who are practising Islamics in this country on our side and separate out the baddies. That's the only way we're going to be able to fight this. Um, and a tweet uh, needs to add Saudi Arabia, where the Twin Towers terrorists came from, says Stuart Coulson. Stuart, a lot of people feeling that, sa- that actually Trump hasn't gone far enough and there should be other countries included on that list. I wonder what Charlotte, living in the beautiful forest of Dean in Gloucestershire, thinks of this. Charlotte, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Is Trump right to stick to his guns and keep going? I think so, yes. I, to, to me, I think he's done the right thing to a point. I am very disappointed, however, that he hasn't uh, included Pakistan, which is a hotbed of terrorism and savagery, as far as I'm concerned, religiously. Yeah. And I think he should have really banned um, you know, Pakistan as well. And I totally agree with what they're saying about Saudi Arabia because I think there are issues there, but I can understand the complexities because obviously, um, because they are a very rich country and they've literally bought everything. But Pakistan, <laughs> Charlotte... And everybody else, but as, as far as I'm concerned... Pakistan, Charlotte, is a Commonwealth country. Are you suggesting that a Commonwealth country, that, that there's a serious problem with it? Well, I mean, you've only got to look at what goes on in the country and also you have to look at um, the, the people that are actually going to uh, Raqqa and, and joining ISIS. A lot of them are, you know, they're not specifically um, Pakistanis, but, you know, a lot of them are. And yeah. I think he could he could have at least done something. I mean, all right, if, if you're saying it's a Commonwealth country um, and do we really want to start banning Commonwealth countries, then fine. But the thing is, there is a problem. There is an issue. He could have done something. OK, Charlotte, you've made your point. And I, but, but, you know, I will ask, Pakistan is listening to this show, you know, if they think Charlotte's completely wrong, come and tell me why she's completely... It's very interesting, though, isn't it? I'm getting caller after caller saying Trump isn't going far enough. Trump needs to extend this ban and bring in a whole load more countries. And on Twitter, Zod the God says, I'm afraid that another Liberal judge will just shoot down this executive order like the first one. I'm not so sure, Zod the God, whether that's actually true. Also on Twitter, I say we should ban all Trump voters from entering the UK until we can figure out what the hell is going on, says George. I like that. That adds a nice little twist to the overall debate. Sticking to his guns, Trump signs executive order number two, putting restrictions in place from people coming into America from countries they think could potentially be dangerous. And so far, most of you don't think he's gone far enough. You should have added countries like Saudi Arabia and possibly many, many others. I think Trump is right to stick to his guns, I have to say. I wonder what Nathaniel in West Norwood thinks. Hi, Nigel. How are you doing? You're OK? Good evening. I'm fine. And you? Now, far away, Nathaniel. What do you think? Well, well, well I like to pull over, OK, and take my keys out because the new UK laws. It always make a comment about this. I, I, I am... Well done, you. Yeah, I mean, I, what I want to say to you, yeah, Nigel, I do like your approach because you are very straight to the point. But you are talking a little bit of rubbish. And so are a lot of the callers that are calling in. Okay. And I'm going to Educa- why. Educate okay. us, Nathaniel. Ed- First and foremost, OK, historically, basically, America, Amer- United States of America is built on, on the premise of, of, of immigration. There is no one there that has a divine right to be in America except for the American Indians, OK? The British and a load of other countries went there took over their land, brought over people and enslaved them, and made the country what it was today. The UK 
or, or the, uh, of the British Empire went around the world and raped and pillaged country after country. Now, bringing it into the modern uh, day... Well, hang on, hang on, Nathaniel. No, 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 it's, no it's not. Hang on. Didn't we bring medicine? Didn't we bring education? Didn't we bring some good things too? Wasn't wasn't the hold on? One of the biggest industries in the UK was was, was slavery. Am I not mistaken? I mean, I went to Liverpool and I saw the museum. That was and dedicated. Nathaniel, we abolished it, and we then stopped other Western countries using the slave trade. We were the guys that actually first recognised it was morally wrong. I mean, come on. Anyway, well, listen. You and okay, I okay, could okay, argue okay, history yeah. forever, but tell me no, something. No, no, of course, of course, of course. Come, gonna, come up gonna, to the present gonna, day. Forward. Come up to the present gonna, day. To the present day. Yeah. Right. So, so, so what you've got is this, okay, well, I, well, what you said is rubbish, but anyway. Okay, Britain and United States have gone in and destabilised a lot of that region. Ah. Whether you like it, whether you like it. No, I think you're right. That's what they've gone in and done. Yeah, that's what they've gone and done. And then what you can't then do is go in to stabilise not just countries or regions in countries, but a continent or continents. Because you've gone, you've gone in and done it in, you've done it, you've done it in Syria, Iraq, mm. Iran, Li- uh, Libya, Libya, Libya. Yep. The, uh, the Taliban was created by the CIA, which was an American organisation to fight the Russians. The problem is, is that people seem to forget what's happened before to understand what's going on now. This is a comeuppance, and this is what happened. Do you think? Look, 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 look what happened to in, in Libya. They had free education, free health care. We ousted Gaddafi. Yep. And now look at the situation that you've got out there. And I'm trying to say to you is this. OK, we have terrorism, yeah? But we are not immune to that because we have been terrorists ourselves. We need to... If we, if we're, if we are supposed to be global leading countries, we need to be mindful enough to implement policies and strategies which help people, not to go around to stabilise addiction for our own, for our own personal gain. Well, the, the, Nathaniel, let me just that. say this. Let, let me just say this. Given the way this call started... And with, in my view, the utter baloney you were talking about slavery, when we should be rather proud of the fact we got rid of it first and enforced it and stopped the others from doing it. I, I Listen, the world down there, I completely agreed with the substantive point of your call. We have caused much of this problem. We have caused, we have increased the levels of terrorism. And in many ways, Nathaniel, we have opened the doors for ISIS. And I think back to all those words that I heard from Tony Blair, whether it was over Afghanistan, whether it was over Iraq, and they were completely wrong, weren't they? They said the the word... But, but Nathaniel, now we've done this, right, and and I do it, I'm I'm with you, we're guilty, but by the same token, surely we still, despite what we've done, have to be careful about who we let in. Well, yes. First of all, again, I disagree with what you're saying because just because you abolish something, you participate in it for so long. Have you? you <laughs> end, the, end the slavery bit. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Right, okay. Right, score right. draw. Score draw. Move on. Your question. <laughs> to answer your question yep. is yes. We need to be mindful and we need to be sensible about what, the way we enforce what we enforce our borders. I agree with that entirely. However, however. That same prudence needs to be applied when we're going around to stabilising countries. We have no business, yeah, going into the Middle East and destabilising them, okay, to a point where people are fleeing their own countries to come here. I'm just trying to say to you, you, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be part of the solution, you can't be then part. Of, you no, know, if you're going to create a problem, yep. you've got to be part of the solution. And that's the, that's the, that's the thing that really gripes me is that I think yep. my final point is that people have just forgotten what you know the Nathaniel, what we've done. You, you've made your point. Brilliantly, I've loved your call. Please call again. Nathaniel from West Norwood, a man of great passion, who, obeying the new law, pulled over and took his keys out of the car. Um, I'm going to ask Malik from Manchester. Malik, is Trump right to have amended the original suspension and put it forward today in the shape that it is? Well, I don't know where to start, but I actually part as well, because I'm absolutely... Uh, uh, it's either I'm a fool or an idiot to stop and actually listen to this programme, because I knew I'd get angry. Right. And I think I've just calmed down a bit now. All um, right. What? So, 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 sorry, that, Malik, why, why were you convinced that you'd get angry? Tell me. Well, I'm angry because of the complete... Like the guy in the uh, European Parliament, and he said, you're a liar, and he is. So if you are ready, and you talk about political correctness... Be courageous, Nigel, and listen. I'm going to listen, I'm Malik. I mean, I'm all ears, mate. You know, far away. Right. What, what is it you gaining from attacking Islam and Muslims week in, week out? How dare you last two weeks you mentioned about the reformation of Islam? What do you know about my religion to do, even say that? 
how dare you, sir? How dare you? Okay, you, so, you so invaded you invaded our countries. You've given our land, Israel. You gave it to European white Europeans. You've taken two continents, two American continents with 70 million dead over 200 years. New Zealand, Australia. You created Gaddafi, <coughs> Saudi kings. You created Saddam Hussein. You created Al Qaeda. You created ISIS. What else do you want? Uh, Malik, Malik, I mean, I mean, Malik, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, listen, I may have done some bad things in my life, but I don't think I'm personally responsible for everything that's happened over the course of the last four centuries. Let me ask you a quick question. Yeah, we have talked, we have talked about problems within the religion of Islam. I've always, Malik, made it, I've always, Malik, made it clear. I am not, I am not your opponent, but would you not agree with me that there are, within some sections of your religion, a problem. Come on, tell me. Tell me what you know about this. Tell me. Come on. Tell me what's the problem. Well, what I know... No, no, go on. What I know... Go on. Go on. Oh, you don't want to listen. What I know is that the the, the later parts of the Quran um, are perhaps unpleasant in a way that many would say the earlier parts of the Bible, perhaps in the modern world, create a problem. I, I, and it's all about I interpretation. You, I challenge you, there are 100% more violent terms in the Bible than there are in the Quran. I'll give you an example. Tell me one, one instance in history where a conqueror enter a city and let everybody, everyone free. Tell me. Give me an example. Malik, Go on. Malik, if we're going to have a theological debate and there isn't time now, you're quite no, right. Really obvious, hang, hang on, there are earlier that. parts, there are earlier parts of the Bible that many today in the 21st century would object to, but very little that anyone would object to that appears in the New Testament. And with the Quran, it is somewhat the other way round. And this is about interpretation. Malik, I just want to say this to you. I just want to say this to you. You know, I am not, I am not against your religion in any way at all. I'm against extremists in your religion that make your life in this country considerably more difficult. And Malik, surely, would it not be sensible for countries like America and Britain to do their utmost to stop terrorists coming in? Yeah, tell me, who's created them? Well, well, Malik, I can't, look, I cannot, and I do take your point, and the previous caller, Nathaniel, made a similar point. I was against the Iraq war. I was against the Libyan no, war, for goodness sake. It isn't all my fault. Not it's all not of you. it. It's you. It's the other dark forces, and you're just a, a pawn in their game. They, they, <laughs> they, 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 I, tell you what, I tell you who's the evil of this. It's the distraction, which is Israel, creating all these ISIS and the rest of them. Well, and if you tell me now... Now, take, now, now, now time, Malik, 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 I think we are heading into prejudicial territory here uh, because, uh, I, you know, when I hear people objecting to the very existence of Israel, um, I begin to ask myself where religious tolerance begins and where it ends. Ends. Um, your the uh, last text and tweets. Uh, Trump is a hundred percent right. He is the president and knows what's best for the USA with the intelligence he receives, and that's what Sy says. And the thought of the EU elite having an army as well as nuclear weapons literally fills me with dread. The UK needs to get out ASAP, says uh, says Seamus. Uh, Prime Minister May, are you listening? We don't want to be in a nuclear European Union. My final thought on all of this is that President Trump, and I've said this before, he is a man, whether you like him or not, of immense moral courage. He believes he was elected on a ticket and he will do his utmost to put that into policy. His first attempt at a travel restriction was turned down by the US courts and led to violent protests in America and on the streets of this country. He has learnt from that. He has put this in place. What's not to like? Who could possibly eject? I think, I think there'll be very few protests over what he's done today.